Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Faraday gem. Now if you've ever tried to use a third-party API and they didn't have a Ruby implementation, you were probably a bit shell-shocked as you had to remember what it's like in the real world. But today we're going to be taking a look at how we can use like a third-party API. We're going to create that API ourselves so we don't have to pay for it. Uh, and just convert the getting and the, the destroying of, of stuff or posting of stuff. Uh, into a uh, pretty low-level Ruby get and post request, which is pretty similar to the fetch API in JavaScript. At that point, you'll be able to look at anything from like the OpenAI stuff for DaVinci or Dolly, to the Google Maps API platform, to even the YouTube API platform. And in the event that they ever remove the Ruby documentation for whatever reason, you'll just be able to look at like the curl requests or, or the JavaScript example and just kind of convert it over to what you need. So in order to do this, we need to create two small little uh, applications. So we're gonna go ahead and stop our server and I'm gonna scroll in, we're gonna CD out of here and then we're just gonna do a, uh, well, let's do a make dir, call it uh, video, we'll then CD into our video. Then in here, we'll start by doing a Rails new API and we'll just pass in the dash dash API flag. This is gonna be the API we're posting to so just real quick, we'll CD into our API. And in here, we'll just do something like uh, Rails G scaffold post. We'll give each post a title and let's do like a views of type integer, I guess. We can then go ahead and do a Rails DB colon migrate command. And then at this point, we can uh, CD out of here and just do a code dot in our video project to open this up in VS Code. Then we can come over here and just real fast, we'll enable the uh, cores gem. We can come down here to line 37, we can uncomment that, save it. And now we can CD back into our API directory and run a bundle command to, oops, to install that gem. And then we can uh, clear our consoles. Some spoilies there. Uh, then we can come into our config and our initializers and our cores.rb. And I'll just hit control plus once. Basically, we just have to uh, uncomment this and then change this example.com to a asterisk because we're just testing, so we don't need any safety here. And then we can go ahead and in our second window here, I'll stop this API and we can CD into that project. So CD into video slash API. And in here, we'll just run a Rails S, but we'll do this with a dash P of 3001 to start this on our API server. Once that's done, we can then come back over to our main tab. We can uh, in here, just create a new Rails project, CD out of here, Rails new client. I guess we have to do it from the video level. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the Faraday gem. We're going to generate a pages controller. And then from there, we're just gonna do our requests real quick. Uh, I felt like this is probably the easiest way for us to, you know, take a look at this from like the, the lowest level we could. So we're just going to do a Rails G controller pages home. And at this point, we're pretty much good to go. We do want to do a bundle add for the Faraday gem. So I'll just add it to our gem file, run the bundle install, etc. Now at this point, we can run a Rails S and this should start up on port 3000. So we can come over to port 3000 and that's good. Now let's come over here and we can minimize our API, open up our client, and in our client, we can come into our config and our routes.rb. So in our routes.rb, we of course want to set the root of the application, which we can do by changing this to root, pages, controller, home action. We then want to create a route that we can use to post to our API, which is gonna be a create post, goes to pages and the uh, create post path. And then we'll do one for destroying as well. We're not going to be covering updating here because it's pretty much the same thing. You just, I mean, it depends on how you structure it, but you, you get the pages parameter and you just pass it back. But once we have that, we can then come over to our app, our views, our pages, and our homepage. And we'll just go, oops, we'll just go ahead and full screen this. Now in our homepage, we want to make sure we can at least see that we're doing something. So we'll start by just rendering some flash notices if we do anything interesting then we can create a form for creating these posts. So we'll just come down here. We'll say form with for a URL, URL that takes us to the create post path, which again in our routes is this post create post path right here. So that's what this form matches up with. We give it a method of post and then we just tell it you can like set the title basically. 
that's pretty much it for the creation. Uh, we can then go ahead and save this, come up into our controllers and our pages controller. Inside of our pages controller, we're gonna wanna create this uh, create post action. The create post action is kind of just this. So basically, uh, let me grab this end and move it down here. What we do is we create a connection with the faraday.new. We pass it in the API URL. Of course, if you're gonna be using this in multiple locations, probably store it in a variable somewhere. We then create a response, which is equal to a connection.post due for a request. Then for this request, you can add whatever you'd like to the URL. In this case, I just append the slash posts. So this becomes localhost port 3000 slash posts with a header of whatever the content type you need is. And if it's an API, generally it's gonna be JSON. And then for your request.body, it's just whatever the uh, body expects. And this is gonna correlate heavily in this case to the controllers and the post controller. Because the post controller requires a post, we have to wrap the whole body in a post right here. And then inside of that post, we can pass in the title and the views. So in a normal, curl requests they might tell you oops, they might tell you that you just need like the title and the views or they might tell you to wrap everything in a body it's going to depend on what it's kind of structured like uh, but you just kind of match up the json data to something like this you call to json at the end of it which just casts it all and then you have your your request right here so you can see if you just have raw json you could even just put it right here uh, and you're pretty much good to go at that point, you can then call a json.parse on the response.body because it's now made the request. And then after you've done that, you'll get back whatever it uh, sent. So in the case of our post controller in the create action, when the post is saved, it renders a json of the at post, which gets put back here into the json body. So then we redirect to the notice path here. What we can do instead is just put some nonsense in here to hopefully error this out. You can come over to uh, port, localhost port 3000, just type some nonsense into our uh, input field here. And then when we click save, we'll see here undefined variable method. If we come over to our API, we can see we inserted something. So that's pretty cool. And then in here, what we can do is we can check what the response looks like. So if we run the response, we get a whole bunch of nonsense here. But the important thing is we have a, res oops, we have a response dot body response.body is just our JSON right here of our entire object. So we can do a response. Let me make sure I zoom in a bit so you can read this. Uh, what we can do here is just a response.body.toJSON uh, like that. Uh, or we could do a, uh, a JSON.parse of the uh, response.body, which gives us something a bit more familiar. So now, of course, we have this, but we can naturally try is maybe we store this in a variable, all this at post equals that, and we have at post, and then we can try to access it with quotes inside of a square bracket. So something like the title maybe, and there you go. You now can access that, that uh, field. So that naturally brings us to the next point. What happens if we create a couple of these, right? So that was the first one. Let's do one more for like, hello world. We'll run that. We can see post created in our uh, API console. We can see we created the hello world post. So now let's try to display these on the page. So when we get to the home page right here, what we want to do is have at posts be equal to a get post method or get posts maybe. And then we can just create a get posts action here. And for this get post action, again, all we really have to do is just tell it that it has a connection with faraday.new, and then it just has to do a response where it does a get request. And then it just has to get the uh, json.parse for the response.body that gets returned because it's in the last line, gets put into here, which means add post is now that response.body. Now on our home page, we can display those posts by doing something like this, where we do a at posts.each do. We can then do a post.title. We can say this post has, uh, I don't know, like EM uh, uh, post and then views, which of course we do have to clean this up because GitHub Copilot thought it was a regular model. So what we'll do is we'll just grab the uh, title here 
square brackets, quotes around it, and then get rid of the dot. So that gives us the title and the views. We can now save that, come down here, and we have our testy test with zero and our hello world with zero. And then of course, if we wanted to, we could uh, increment those views to see that that's working. But okay, the final thing we kind of want to do here is the delete button. We can take a look at that. Remember in our routes here, our delete required a destroy underscore post that took in an ID parameter that goes to the pages controller destroy action. So in our home, we can create that pages controller destroy action call with a button to delete a destroy post path because destroy post correlates to destroy post. And then we pass in the post and then we grab the ID just like we grab the views and the title with the method of delete. We can then come back to our pages controller and you guessed it, create a destroy post action. Destroy post is gonna look eerily similar to the others because the only thing we really have to do is once again tell it here is your Faraday connection. And then with your connection, I want you to do a response uh, con.delete. And then once we have that deletion, you can even do something like a check like you normally would where you do if response.status is equal to 204, which is what the uh, controller is going to return when something gets deleted here. So if it's a 204, then redirect to the root path with a notice of post deleted, else re redirect to the root path and say post not deleted. So we can go ahead and save that. We can then come over here and refresh. We now have a delete button. So let's just do something like 2222 put that there, post gets created. We can then come down here, 2222. And if we open up this terminal, I'll hit enter, we can click the delete button. You can see here, delete from posts where posts is equal to blah, blah, blah. And now we only have those two posts left. We can even clear them all and have nothing left here and then just create something else. So the point of this is, if you have something like the uh, OpenAI library, for example, where they give you like the pip instructions and then you have to use like uh, whatever the open API command is, you can usually infer, even if you don't necessarily know uh, what the uh, what the language is, what you're supposed to do. So in, in this case, we have our uh, post request right here, right? And we have a post request to the NPM OpenAI Node.js library. If we look at this, we don't need to require it. We don't need to really figure out the configuration. Uh, essentially what's happening here is you're passing back an API key. That's why they're grabbing an API key, I'd imagine. And then you're creating a response where you also pass in a model, a prompt, a temperature, and a max token. So. In this case, we have these, we have this API key. If we come over to the repo from the request we did for the OpenAI tutorial the other day, you can see that in this, we used Faraday to do the OpenAI uh, connection. And the way that I generated this was I pretty much just translated it into this exact format. We have our URL, we have our headers. Of course, here we have two headers because one needs to be our authorization bearer token kind of a weird quirk, but because it's an API key, you pass it as an authorization bearer token. That's just the way that these, these tokens work. Uh, but the rest of it, you're gonna see looks pretty similar. We don't have everything wrapped in a post. It's wrapped in a prompt with a size and, a, and an N. We still call to JSON at the end of it. We still do the JSON response, and then we just handle the response however we want to, to get whatever we want out of it. Here we know it's all wrapped in the body, neat and tidy, but here uh, it wasn't in the, the response.body, it was actually inside the response.body's data and then the first URL. That said, uh, it, this is how we accessed it. And it's very similar to the same structure. So if you do run into an API and you don't quite know how to access it, sometimes the, the simplest response or the simplest solution is to just create your stuff from scratch rather than spending time trying to find an API that works. Hopefully this was interesting, hopefully it was helpful, and hopefully I will see you in the next tutorial.